where you as a group can convince, can be convinced, can convince me that two graphs are not isomorphic. But we need a protocol to do it. And this protocol is different than the normal non-deterministic protocol. It's a protocol which is part of a larger computation style called IP. OK, now here's the conversation we're going to have. There are two graphs, G1 and G2. I want to be convinced that they are not isomorphic. We're going to do graph non-isomorphism. No way to do this in non-deterministic polynomial time, but there is a way to do it in this style. I want to be convinced they're not isomorphic. I want you to help me. You can provide me with guesses, with information. I can verify that information. I don't necessarily trust you, but I'll check whatever you give me. And I'll try to use the information you give me to convince myself that these are not isomorphic. So if I ask you for an ordering of a particular graph, I get nothing from that. I'd have to do that n factorial times to get anything from it. But here's what I'm going to ask you to do instead. I'm going to ask you to do me a big favor. Well, and this. I'm going to take one of these graphs at random. I'm not going to tell you which one. I'm going to reorder its vertices. Let's call that graph H. It's either G1 or G2 all mixed up, because you guys have a copy of G1 and G2. I'm going to mix one of them up. I'm going to call that H, and I'm going to send it to you. Okay? And I'm going to ask you, is H equal to G1 or is it equal to G2? Everyone understand what I'm doing? We'll see why I'm doing this in just a moment. But make sure you understand the protocol. So we can have a conversation back and forth now. I don't just wait for you to give me information. I give you something to do, and you give me back information. And we go back and forth, and there's some rolling of the dice here, too. The rolling of the dice is that I rolled some dice to decide which one of these I was going to send you. I get to do random stuff. You don't get to do random stuff. I get to do random stuff. So I pick this randomly. It gives me power to do random stuff. It's amazing how much power it gives me. I pick this randomly. I hand it off to you. I randomly redistribute the, the nodes, and I say, which one is it, G1 or G2? And you sit there, and I don't care how much time you take or what you've got under your sleeve, you're going to give me some answer. Now let's say it's really G1, and you get it right. You say it's G1. Well, you had a 50-50 chance to get it right. So that's not a very big deal. But let's say I randomly choose back and forth between these two, and for 50 times in a row, you get it right. The chance of that happening, if you did your guess randomly, is 1 and 2 to the 50th. That's the chance of you getting every one of those right. So there's no way you're getting it right randomly. If you're getting these right, if I have a 50 mail back and forth with you, and you get it right 50 times in a row, I can be certain, virtually certain, not certain, virtually certain, 99.999%, with only the teeniest chance of an error, I'm virtually certain that you did not randomly just pick G1, G2, and send it back to me. Well, how could you know whether it's G1 or G2? If they, if they get it wrong, that means that they're isomorphic. No, it doesn't mean anything if they get it right or wrong um, in a single time. If you send them G1 and they, say, and they match it with G2? They're matching it with H. Yeah, they're picking, they're, signing they're saying that H came from G1. Yeah, but what if they show it comes from G2? Doesn't that mean that G1 and G2 are equal? Yes, it does. Yeah, okay. Yes, yes, it would. Right. So let's think of the possibilities here. Let's say these two really were the same. Then how would this protocol go? I pick one of them at random. I send it to you guys. And you tell me which one it is. You can try your hardest to mess me up. But how are you going to possibly know which one it was if these two are exactly the same? The best you can do is random then. So what you asked, Neil, what if they're the same? What if they are the same and I do my protocol? Then I will never expect any answer better than random because you don't know which one it came from. And it could be either G1 or G2. Whatever method you use, you're going to have to guess sooner or later. So if they are the same, I expect random answers from you guys. Therefore, when I get an answer like this, where you've got 50 in a row right, you've convinced me of something. You've convinced me that they are probably not isomorphic. When they are isomorphic, you can try as hard as you want, 
and you'll never convince me of anything. But if they are not isomorphic, you can definitely convince me that they're not isomorphic by getting the answer right a lot. So this protocol is different than non-determinism. For one thing, I have random choices that I can use. Flipping a coin, and that gives me a lot of power. For another thing, I get repeated conversations, not just a one-time letter. We get to send letters back and forth 50 times. It's the repetition of the letters and the use of the randomness that gives this <laughs> protocol more power than NP. And completely fascinating and interesting, it picks it up exactly one complexity class, moving it from NP into P space. Everything you can do with this protocol, you can write a deterministic polynomial time algorithm that uses polynomial space algorithm. And if you have a polynomial space algorithm, you can come up with a protocol, a conversation like this, which solves it just as well. They're equal. So that's one of the really beautiful results in complexity theory. And this is new. This is not new. It's 10 years old, probably. Certainly within the last 10, 15 years. OK, I'm going to quit with that. Other questions about anything?